Okay, today I'm going to describe how to uh, boot to Windows PE from a USB, um, a third way, and it sort of combines uh, the first one I showed you, which is in part six, which is a Microsoft only um, installation using disk part, and that, uh, that boots with the uh, boot manager. The second method was using Rufus to uh, load Grub, and then use NT Loader to get into Windows PE. And this version is a combination of the two, so it's going to use Rufus, the Grub, um, and then Microsoft Boot Manager, or Boot X64 if it's EFI. Um, there are advantages to all of them. The Microsoft version uh, always, not always, but um, has a much higher uh, chance of success because uh, you know all firmware is tested against Microsoft, not all against Grub. The um, advantages of using NT Loader is it's much more verbose when it's loading and so you know what it's doing. The Microsoft Boot Manager is uh, can, can typically spend 40, 40 seconds with a blank screen uh, which is very alarming for somebody who's not familiar with the process and may th they may think it's, um, it's broken. I have to say the first time I, I, I tried this um, I did think uh, well that's not working. So we're gonna we're gonna build on the um, USB that we created in part nine, um, which is here. It consists of the boot uh, partition, which was FAT32, and then the much larger images, uh, which was NTFS and can store um, our master image. So. Uh, the way we're going to do this is copy things from a Windows 10 install, which is this ISO here. We want to copy that, that, Boot Manager and Boot Manager EFI to um, our images there. Yeah, I've already done it. And in images, you need, we need to copy the master image and sources just needs boot.wim. Now boot.wim is also in the boot partition because it's used by NT Loader and it was in WinP, uh, WinRE. So copy that as well into, into sources on in here. Now bootnet, um, boot, sorry boot.wim was um, modified to have a startnet.cmd file looking like this and that was described in, um, in at least part 38. So you need to, need to do that, or have one already. The next thing to do is to um, modify the um, grub configuration. There's grub CFG, and this is the one that we developed in part nine. Um, I have made a modification, which is to improve probe by using the um, environment variable root, which is actually that. Um, so that occasionally failed. This never does. Um, but what we've added now is installers using Windows um, Microsoft Boot X64. So in um, for Eufy we chain load that, and for uh, BIOS Legacy uh, we use NT Loader to load that, and we boot it. So that's all there is to um, updating Grub. Finally, we um, we need to actually load. Um, NT loader uh, onto the USB because um, the USB that we copied, the um, ISO that we copied was Ubuntu and uh, they, they obviously didn't want any Windows material on it. So to do that you have to download um, Grub from here, get the latest one, say that one, uh, unzip it, get NT loader out and put it in In here. Now we're we're good to go. Um, here's the uh, NT loader one that we did in part nine, and as you can see, you get a really good progress bar. It's the Microsoft Boot Manager one that we've just created. Um, you saw a little flash of the windows there, and now it's a blank screen. Blank screen for about thirty seconds, and then we get the Windows logo, and. Uh, the Whirling Dervish and Windows P will start up.
there we go. Windows P starts up and uh, looks for the um, partition with images in it. And when it finds it, it'll display the menu. So I say it's a bit. Uh, there you go. It's a bit less um, uh, easy to well, not easy to use. A um, bit less comfortable to use than NT Loader, um, but it has a more chance of success on every sort of machine, and uh, could be used as a last resort. Okay.